Advocates of women's suffrage had many different ways to make their points felt, but the Woman Citizen, which is the organ of the National American Women's Suffrage Association, was one of those ways. Here's an example from October 1917. This was the weekly publication of the, of the NASA, the National American Women's Suffrage Association. It had been going on since 1870, shortly after the Civil War when they began to advocate for a federal amendment. And this issue is uh, talking about what women's suffrage would do, but using a war image and metaphor, one might say, of mined harbors and netting off the mines to express what women would do with political power. They would rein in booze, vice, and corrupt politics and protect the home. and. This was very consistent with the message of the NASA then. They put a lot of their women suffrage advocates into war work to show what uh, valuable and loyal citizens women were. They called the journal a journal of democracy, arguing that without full participation by the women as well as the men, it was not a real democracy. Right. And, and there, there are ads in this journal. They had to support this print and editorials and summaries of news and progress. One of the things that intrigues me about this is, of course, the war for democracy. That's Wilson's slogan. And so now women are part of that war. I wonder whether the subtitle was adopted after the war That's an interesting question. Began. Yes, it could have been a new subtitle because these, they also called it a weekly chronicle, chronicle. of progress. Yes. Always yes. looking up. And we have a few other issues from June of 1919 when the uh, Senate was the second House of Congress to approve the woman suffrage amendment. So it was a moment of great triumph but not completion yet because all the states had still to ratify the amendment. But this one was right after the Senate passed the 19th Amendment. It is completely wonderful because, of course, it uh, is trying to hammer down or to destroy an American democracy which is half free and half female. Of course, that leaves out another half or another <laughs> 20% or so, which is um, uh, African-American yeah, and Chinese and so on. Uh, but now we're going to restore a new American democracy with equal rights for all. And we imagine that equal rights for all is just all women as well as. Yeah. But that, of course, raises the question of how the women's suffrage movement dealt with African-American women who they mm -hmm. were somewhat ambivalent about giving the vote to. Yeah, I would say the women's suffrage movement was split as the country was split with the Southerners avidly against blacks of any sex voting, whereas there were certain Northerners who were very willing to uh, white Northerners who were very willing to welcome black women into their movement, but they were a distinct yeah. minority. And I think they weren't willing to offend the Southerners, yes. in other words. That's true. They were By willing the to throw black women under the bus, as it were, if that's what it took yes, to get to them. to get the Southern part of the country the, behind it. The vote. But this shows Uncle Sam doing that. Uncle Sam in his traditional white male garb. <laughs> uh, Right. I, I like this one a lot because it is the transitional point when the amendment went to the states, the end of June, and it shows some figure who looks vaguely presidential, not Uncle Sam, uh, introducing the, fem the, the federal amendment of women voting, dressed like a bride, to the state legislatures and recommending yeah. her. Actually, this is supposed to stand for Congress, I see. Right, right. Yeah. It's Congress that is sending now this yeah. federal amendment, this to bride state. to the yeah. state legislature. An important introduction, it says. Yes. One of the senses I have about this particular thing is it tells us something about 
the conflict and the effort to reconcile the sort of competing interests, which I find fascinating. And it, it helps to explain how historians can see, you know, what it took to get the women's suffrage amendment ratified even after it was passed. Yes, that very true. We need to introduce this to the states. We need to be careful. We need mm. to make the match with the individual states. That's a very good point. Also, I just want to say that for purposes of uh, teaching history and understanding history, that the fact that these are done as political cartoons yes. is very, very important. Pro political cartooning is a really important political method all through the 19th and early 20th century, probably more so actually than later just because of literacy issues. And the, the women suffragists were very good at this. Uh, sometimes there were male cartoonists who were drawing these, and, yes. uh, and often there were female cartoonists. We actually who were, don't know who drew these, but look yes. at this one, and which is another cartoon that um, uh, you know sort of opens up the question of what it was that women really wanted. They wanted mm. a blind justice. Well, but, but she's saying this is the League of Women Voters, which was formed out of the former National American Women's Suffrage Association once the vote was gained, and they were not going to ally themselves with a party. Right. They were going to be nonpartisan, but they were not going to be blind. Right. So there's a critique of this idea that justice really is blind, I think. Do, do you think? Yes, I think that that's true. It is a critique of the whole concept of justice in a way, even yeah. though this is a female justice who is uh, yeah. blindfolded. But justice was always depicted yeah, as a, a woman figure. is a female yeah, definitely. figure. Like most of the abstract virtues. Yeah. But they also have advertisements yes. from major department stores and garment manufacturers and so on. Well, they were so on, seeking so them. Not, I, I, noticed, yeah. I noticed that at the end, there was a little, uh, one of these earlier ones there, it says, when, when, uh, oh, this, yeah, when dealing with advertisers, please mention the woman citizen. Right. And their headquarters was in New York, Madison Avenue. Right, right. But look at this ad for themselves, right? Catching up with the women, women's magazines are rushing forward to offer various programs of special features to show a new come recognition of the new note for the women of today. Mm. And that note is citizenship. You can find out a great deal about what was on the minds of politically active women by looking at magazines like this. Yeah, and mother, home, uh, yes, and politics. politics. So it was part, a big part of their it argument was that yeah. the home and motherhood is connected to politics. Yeah. Is not divorced. But from the it. target audience for the woman citizen doesn't seem to be the woman wage earner. At least not the sort of run of the mill wage earner. I, I mean, there are some moments, especially at the beginning, yeah. when they seem to be allied with the Women's Trade Union mm -hmm. League. But for the most part, the advertisements here seem to be advertisements for, for mothers, for homes. Well, there, there's an article here on the maidservant problem, but I see that it is dealing with what a difficult occupation it is and ends with, with recommendations for making it better. Living in is discouraged, two weeks holiday urged, and a new form of employment center called Household Orderly Corps. Right, well, military but, um, right. But that's, of course, a way to encourage employers to be nicer to, be to their yes. employees. Right, so it's a progressive yes. approach to middle-class women's issues. Yes, yes. Yeah.